Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jordan Warnetsky. I am here on behalf of the Bismarck NDDOT District. So our next speaker is, is Justin Schlosser. He is here to discuss the Highway Safety Improvement Program and the Local Road and Safety Program this hour. Please welcome Justin Schlosser. Thanks, Jordan. Can everyone hear me in the back? Sandy, thank you. The only bad thing about being up in this room is you don't get the intro music like everyone else does. But good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming today. I get the privilege of talking to you about two very important topics today. And those are the Highway Safety Improvement Program and the Local Road Safety Improvement Program. So the agenda for our half hour hour together um, is going to be to do an overview of the HSIP program, also known as the Highway Safety Improvement Program, an overview of the Local Road Safety Program, also known as the LRSP program, HSIP funding, HSIP schedule, and eligible HSIP projects. So now that everyone is aware of what HSIP and LRSP stands for, um, I'll probably use those acronyms from now on for the rest of my presentation. So the first graph I want to start with is a very important graph. And this is data showing the fatalities on all public roadways in North Dakota. And this is the data from 2012 to 2020. Our 2021 data is not finalized yet, so we don't have that information yet at this time on the graph. But as you can see, um, something that we should be proud of, but we still got a lot of work to do on our public roadways for safety. Um, our trend line is going down in the five-year rolling average is going down, and hopefully we can continue that, but we need everyone to chip in to accomplish that goal of getting to vision zero. So with that, the HSIP program. The goal of HSIP is to achieve a significant reduction in traffic fatalities and serious injuries on public roads through implementation of infrastructure related highway safety improvement, pro highway safety improvement pr improvements. Um, few very key points on this is infrastructure related. So it has to be infrastructure items. Um, and it is, the goal is to reduce fatalities and serious injuries. And the last thing I'd like to point out is that with many federal funding, we can only use it on our state highway system, but this HSIP program can be used on all public roadways, which is a great benefit to this program. So anybody out there who works on county or local roadways, um, please be aware that this program also relates to you. So just a little bit of overview, the HSIP program is a core federal aid program, and it ties directly to the ACE SHSP program, or the Strategic Highway Safety Plan, which is also known as our Vision Zero Plan in North Dakota. And that has a direct tie to the Highway Safety Improvement Program in North Dakota also. And there you can just see our Vision Zero Plan was last updated, completed in 2018. We uh, actually have an RFP on the street now to update that, um, and I think we have to have that updated by 2023. And just the next picture is just the HSIP program that we put together um, yearly. We put that together with a four-year list of projects for the upcoming years. In the Vision Zero plan, there are safety emphasis areas, and these are the six main emphasis areas in the safety plan. 
And the two that I really want to talk about today are more related to the infrastructure side of it. And those would be the two in the yellow boxes that you can see on the left side. And those would be lane departure, which most of our fatalities in North Dakota on the roadways are lane departure crashes. Another one is intersections. The other four are more related to the behavioral side of it. So this is a graph that talks about our Vision Zero plan at the top in the big blue box. And underneath that, the first row in the pink big box is the whole pink box talks about the HSIP program. And the first row is the problem identification. So this is where we collect data, traffic volumes, roadway, geometry, crashes, traffic control and many other things to identify the problem. And just going down through that, I don't want to go through the whole thing in detail, but going down that a little bit further, you can see the row where we develop the HSIP project listing. So next in the graph, just to get a little bit more detail, is the blue box and that is the reactive analysis that is done. And these are traditionally called hotspots. Analysis of high crash locations and resulting projects tend to be ex expensive because you're looking at one specific intersection or segment of a roadway. And so we get projects from this reactive analysis side from um, when we do, every year my team analyzes the high crash location listings and those are sent out by me. Many of you probably receive those emails. We can also get them, get reactive analysis from, we have a fatal crash review team if there's a fatal crash on our roadway system. And also road safety reviews when we get a call from an entity, a local jurisdiction or the state highway department, we wanna look at a specific intersection or segment that we go out and get a specialized group of people to look at the safety improvements of that segment or intersection. So the other part of it in the pink on the right side is the systemic analysis. And this is the one that typically, if you don't work with this, many people don't know about. So the systemic analysis looks at specific characteristics where severe crashes have occurred. And so this uses risk factors to identify locations that benefit from low cost safety countermeasures. Resulting projects tend to be spread out over a large area and we tend to save money because we're doing a bigger project area or a bigger widespread location. So on the right side, I just went through enlisted when we did our local road safety plans. We took risk factors for intersections and you can see the seven of the risk factors, there's all stars up there, seven of the risk factors that we used for looking at intersections we did when we did the local road safety plan. Also, I listed the five risk factors that we used when we looked at curves. And so when we did this, for the local road safety plans, if anything had three or four stars, they were put as um, something, a risk factor location and a project or a plan to do improvements at that location were completed or were put in the plan. So on that side, we have the local road safety plan like we've been talking about. And then we also did this on our state system too. So we did the state road safety plan and we just completed those a few years ago where we did safety improvement projects. Um, we took it district by district. So we did all eight of our districts on the, the DOT side. So like we talked about the local road safety plan, we did these in 2013 and 15, um, data-driven process with the goal to 
to reduce severe and fatal crashes. Remember that. Documented at-risk locations identifies low-cost safety improvement strategies. Um, and it also positioned the counties to submit projects and compete for the available HSIP or safety funds, whichever you want to call them. So as I discussed, in 2013 and 2015, we completed the LRSPs, or the Local Road Safety Plans, for all 53 counties. We completed them for the 12 major cities, the four tribes, and also the one national park. And this is the website that shows all those plans, and I threw a link at the bottom. Um, I think our presentations are going to be posted afterwards if anybody wants to get to that, or you can Google North Dakota DOT Local Road Safety Plans, I think, pops the link up to the plans. So typical information that was in the Local Road Safety Plans. Description of safety emphasis areas. This identifies list of high priority, low cost safety strategies. Documents at high at risk locations along county and local road systems. And so this was what I was talking about before. This was the systemic analysis that looked at risk, high risk locations. And so we looked at, when we did that, we looked at segments, curves, and intersections. So those were the main three that we looked at. And the local road safety plans, the great thing about them is it developed and suggested countywide safety projects. And in there, it also discussed behavioral crash statistics, potential safety strategies, and current resources available for implementation of the behavioral side. So it just didn't include the local road safety plans, just didn't include the infrastructure side. Um, it had some components of the behavioral side in them as well. So this is probably hard to see, but this just is a typical page from the local road safety plan. And it can act as an application to be torn out or copied or emailed to me to submit for HSIP projects. So easy process for locals to look at their local road safety plans, grab the sheet, and send it in to me. So each application in the local road safety plan is considered a pre-approved eligible project for HSIP funding. Um, submits the form directly to me through the solicitation process. And the North Dakota DOT is committed to assist with funding for the local road safety projects. So we have, we get about, we'll go into more detail, but we get a certain amount of money from HSIP funding federally every year. Um, we, are we are committed to split that 50-50, if need to, from the state system and the local system. These are just a couple messages that we wanted to, I wanted to relate to some of the local agencies out there, if there's any consultants or local agencies that work with the counties out there. Um, please be aware that you can submit your projects to submit your projects. If there's any public people that want to submit or have a location that want to be looked at, please submit that to your commissioner or council. Um, so one other thing is that in the local road safety plan, you still have to complete the preliminary engineering. One thing to get away from that is if there's projects such as putting chevrons on the outside of a curve or some simple signing projects. You can also do those projects by yourself. You don't need to go through the HSIP program to do those small projects if, if you have forces to do that. Uh, if you're working in an MPO planning boundary, please make sure that um, you coordinate with your MPO and work through them. They're the ones that need to submit the information to me for HSIP project. 
And then if in planned improvements can be done in-house with your own forces, like I mentioned, that can be done sooner, cheaper, and some less red tape that you have to go through as an entity. One other thing that we really haven't done in our state too much on the local side, and, and there's been some more discussions nationally, is possibly bundling with other local entities. So that either means you in another county or another local jurisdiction beside you working with them to, to bid a project together so that we get cheaper prices and a bigger project to construct. So funding is the next part. Um, currently, the North Dakota receives from Federal Highway about $12 million per year for HSIP funding. This should be increasing with the new highway bill, um, hopefully a little bit. As I mentioned before, we try to split the funds. If we get enough local projects, 50% on the local side and 50% on the state highway system. And as I mentioned before, local jurisdictions, counties, um, and others still need to pay 100% for the preliminary, preliminary engineering costs. Thanks for the picture, sir. <laughs> um, and then list the, we have a list of HSIP cost petition patients. So if you look down that list, on the federal side, everything is 90% except for the last column. So your construction cost for your project, 90% of your con construction costs is going to be covered federally. And then you can look up and down that that first column and over to the right as far as what the state and local match, not match, but what the state and local percentage would be for that type of project, that type of roadway system. Um, one thing I did want to point out is that tribal roadways, local and the state system, we are, it is 100% federally funded. So the, for the construction costs, they do not have to pay um, that's all 100% federally funded. So the schedule for all HSIP projects. So in the fall, I send out an H HSIP solicitation email and the high crash location listings that we talked about previously that my team puts together and the HSIP application form, which we'll get into in a second. And that is just SFN59959. And so the email will come from myself, and all applications are due back to me by the end of the year. So December 31st, January 1st time frame. Um, in the winter, my staff analyze the HSIP requests and put together a draft project listing. So if a project is approved, it goes into the last year of a four-year program. Because as I mentioned before, we have a four-year program. Um, and currently, we are way over program since we only get 12 million. 12 million doesn't get us very far anymore these days, right? But we are over programmed. Um, but it goes into the last year unless requested sooner. And you have a specific reason that, the, that it needs to be moved up to a, a year previous to the four years. And so I'll work with you on that if there's a good reason to move that project up sooner rather than being four years out. In the spring, we verify the construction year for previously approved projects. And then in the summer, I finalize the HSIP project listing. And in the summer, I send responses out on approvals or non-approvals for the HSIP program. So there's a little bit of time there from, and I've been getting some questions already from the 2021 submittals. Um, if we've approved those or accepted those yet, we do have a little bit, there is a little bit of a time gap there from January 1st of 2022 to when you'll get notified if the project has been approved or not for the HSIP funding. On August 31st of every year, um, we finalize the HSIP project listing, and that's due to Federal Highway. 
And also there is a federal requirement of online reporting that we do every year for the HSIP program. This is just the form. Um, probably can't read it from the back, that's okay. Um, just a few things I want to point out. One form, one page. Pretty simple to fill out. Your name, contact information. We ask you to come up with a project cost and submit that to the back of it. Nothing too complicated at all. Um, it talks about what is the roadway ownership, state, county, city, tribe. Talks about the emphasis area, which we talked about previously, and the functional class of the roadway, an improvement category, and then there's two open field boxes, and they're pretty simple questions. Decisions, describe current safety issue. So what's your safety issue of your roadway? or segment or intersection, and describe proposed safety improvements. So it's nothing too complicated, nothing that's gonna take a significant amount of time, um, but this is the, all that you need to fill out with the cost and submit to myself to submit for HSIP funding. So countermeasures. There's many different resources that we use to, that we look at to make infrastructure safety improvements. And those can all be seen there. Um, a couple of them that I wanted to point out is the CMF or crash modification factor clearinghouse. That's a major thing that many of you may not use, but it's something that traffic people and safety people use a lot. It discusses a specific, you can check a specific improvement and check the percentage of reduction of crashes that you will see with that improvement. Um, we also get national reports and national research on topics. And then one that we'll go into a little bit of detail on is Federal Highway has done a good job of, of listing proven safety countermeasures and we'll go through those right now. So Federal Highway has a list of proven safety countermeasures and they break those down into five separate categories. And each category has a, a number of infrastructure safety and countermeasures that can be completed. So we'll just go through them quickly. I'll pick out a few that we can talk about. The first category is speed management. Um, one that you can probably see a lot, not a lot, but on a roadway system is the variable speed limit signs. Um, they used to be called dynamic speed display signs. Um, they just got, the, we just updated our policy and the name got changed in the upcoming MUTCD, so they're going to be called Vehicle Speed Display Signs or VSFS, Feedback Signs, Vehicle Speed Feedback Signs. I'm still getting used to that one myself. The next one is Roadway Departures. So like I said before, this is our big one. Most of our fatal crashes come from roadway departure in North Dakota, being such a rural state. So there are many simple, low-cost strategies that you can do to reduce the chance of a crash for roadway departure. One of them that has been catching on more nationally and, and we haven't started widely across North Dakota yet is the first one is wider edge lines. A lot of the national states are using six inch edge lines <clears throat> and we've done those on an example I'll show you in, in a little bit here. Um, enhanced delineation for horizontal curves. As you, if you drive many of our state highways, a lot of our curves now that are sharper have chevron signs on them, rumble strips, medium barriers, um, there's many low cost strategies that you can do for roadway departure. Another big one in our state is intersections. Um, these you can see many improvements that you can do to improve intersections. Um, one of my favorites is roundabouts, huge proponent of roundabouts. Another one is turn lanes and then the one on the right side, the second one down, is systemic application, multiple low-cost countermeasures, and we'll go through that in a little bit more detail later also. There's many improvements you can do there. 
some of them that you may be seeing more and more in North Dakota are the one on the top right, and that would be rectangular rapid flashing beacons. And the last category that Federal Highway has is cross-cutting. Um, it's more of an open category. I would say it, so it's friction. Um, the one on the right is, the great thing is that many other states across the nation do not have local road safety plans. Um, probably only a dozen or so, maybe a few less. Um, so we are up on that step across the nation. So we have completed those and with the RFP that we have out now for updating our Vision Zero plan, there's also a component in that RFP to look at our local road safety plans and update those possibly. And also the last one is road safety audits and those in North Dakota, instead of audits, we say road safety reviews. So we've talked about those a little bit during this presentation already. Next, lastly, I'm just gonna go through some pictures of some strategies or, or projects that you can, improvements, infrastructure improvements that you can submit for HSIP funding. So the first one is very simple, chevrons. Um, very simple, low cost, very low cost application that can significantly reduce roadway departure crashes. Next one is shoulder rumble strips and also center line rumble strips. I know on the North Dakota system, we have these everywhere already, but on some, on some of the local systems, county systems don't have these yet. Um, I encourage you to submit these for HSIP projects. Um, we can participate in that funding and help you get these completed on your system. We talked about six inch wide pavement markings, um, proven and shown that these reduce crashes from lane, depart lane departure crashes. Turn lanes, a little bit more cost, medium cost improvement, but turn lanes are known and have shown, proven to reduce crashes. Here's one that I mentioned earlier that we could go into a little bit more detail on. And this is the rural improvement, intersection improvement package, and we did these on our state road safety plan. So there's many small things that you can do at an intersection to improve the safety of the intersection. Destination light. Um, this is a light that is just placed at one quadrant of the intersection just to inform the traveling public that a major intersection is coming up. Also, I wanted to point out that on the left side of the page, we have our lighting warrants for destination lighting. So you can read those there. One thing I wanted to point out is just the cross product. Some people may not know what the cross product is, but the cross product is pretty simple. You take the AADD, AADT of the minor road and of the major road, multiply those together and get a number. If it's greater than two million, it meets the warrant for a destination light. Illumination lighting, more lighting of an, of an entire intersection same types of warrants can be seen on the left. Some of them are different. There's also a cross product one for that. We also light our roundabouts and other major intersections. High tension cable medium barrier. Um, we have made this a priority to continue to put produce a segment of our interstate system with high tension median cable guardrail every year. So you'll continue to see high tension out on our interstate system. Um, major, major improvement that significantly reduces the risk of a major serious injury or fatal crash. Roundabouts, one of my favorites as being the traffic operations engineer, this is one that improves traffic operations and also improves safety of an intersection. 
huge proponent of a roundabout, it's a little bit more of a costly than some of the other items we're talking about today. But if you have an area or intersection that you want to discuss with me, if you think a roundabout is a great solution for that, please come forward and let me know and we can discuss that and hopefully get another roundabout built in the state of North Dakota. Two lane to three lane or four lane to three lane conversions. As we talked about before, rectangular rapid flashing beacons is just um, instead of the flashing beacon that was not in the olden days, but three, four, five years ago, I guess, it was just one bulb that flashed. Now they have two rectangles that flash at a specific pattern that has been studied nationally. So you'll see more of these out. And then lastly, I just wanted to talk about safety corridors. So the North Dakota DOT has, we have taken a new strategy or a new tool, and we have three safety corridors out on our state highway system now. This is just some of the many low cost improvements that we have done on the safety corridors. We've painted the speed limit pavement markings, did six inch wide wet, wet reflective pavement markings. We have speed reduction markings. We have the vehicle speed feedback signs. We also have no passing zones. Um, a lot of low cost strategies on these safety corridors. So there's three up in our state right now. And currently we are looking at our next three safety corridors and those will be coming out in the future. So with that, today we talked about the HSIP program in general and did an overview. The first link is a link my staff took quite a bit of time and we developed an HSIP guidebook. It goes through everything that I basically went through today and more in detail. That can be found on our programming traffic operations website as well. We also talked about the local road safety program and we have a link there to all the local road safety programs that we developed in 2013 through 2015. We talked about the funding, the schedule, and many of the eligible HSIP project improvements that can be completed and submitted for the program. So with that, thank you for your time today. Really appreciate it. Um, again, Justin Schlosser, there's my email and my phone number. I'm very open and love discussing how we can improve safety, not only on North Dakota highways, but also on local roads and local jurisdiction roadways as well. So with that, thank you. I'll be here for the rest of the conference if you want to talk about HSIP. Um, if not, always feel free to give me a call or send me an email. Thank you.